All right then, so we've seen now how during development with Tailwind, our CSS file is pretty massive and that can cause DevTools to be a bit laggy and make for a less pleasant development experience. So a fairly new feature in Tailwind is the just-in-time compiler, which can rebuild our output CSS file on the fly as we use Tailwind classes in our templates so that the result is a CSS file that contains only the classes and styles that we use in our HTML pages, as well as a few base styles. So how do we use this just-in-time compiler? Well, to begin with, we'll just use the same CLI command as before, which is npx, tailwind CSS, the i flag, and then the input file, and then the o flag, and then the output file. So this is what takes our input CSS file that we made, pulls down all of tailwind, pipes that as well as our own custom styles into the output file. So this is what we've been doing so far, right? Now what I'm going to do is add on the just in time compiler flag, which is double dash J I T. So this is telling Tailwind now to use the just in time compiler. Next, we also need a purge flag, so double dash purge. And this flag is going to tell Tailwind which template files to look in when it starts to purge our output CSS of unused styles. So we want to tell it to look in our HTML file. But in my case, I'm not just going to say I want you to look in this one HTML file. I want to tell it to look in any HTML file in the root directory, just in case I add more pages in the future. So the way I do this is by setting purge equal to dot forward slash, then an asterisk, and then dot HTML. And this all goes inside double quotes. Now the asterisk right there means that we look for any file name basically, but it has to have an extension of dot HTML. So we're looking for any HTML files in the root directory. So if I hit enter now, this is going to create our output CSS, but now it's going to purge out any styles or class that is not used in our HTML file. So now that's done, let's take a look in our build CSS file. And firstly, we can see that the length of this is nowhere near as much as before. We can still see a lot of base styles, which are kind of like Tailwind reset styles at the top, but the majority of the Tailwind classes have been purged or removed, and we're only left with the few classes that we're using in our HTML. And we can see all of those at the bottom of the file. So now the file size of this is going to be significantly smaller. Let's preview this in a browser. So first of all, we can see everything is still styled correctly. That's a good sign. And now if we open up the dev tools and go to the network tab, I'm just going to refresh so we can see everything listed here. We're going to see that the styles file is now significantly smaller. This was four megabytes before. All right, so cool, that worked. But what about when we start to use extra classes in our HTML file? Well, let's try adding some of those extra classes. So first of all, let's add the P8 class and also the text center class to the div around the buttons. Now, I also want to add some classes to these buttons. So on the first button, I'm going to add a class of bg-blue-600 to give it a blue background. And then also text-white to make the text white. We'll give it some padding, so P-2, and also the class of rounded to give it some border radius. Now, I'm not going to add any other classes to the next button yet. We'll do that later. All I want to do now is save this file and preview it in the browser again. And we can see that these new classes that we've added haven't had any effect. They've not worked and the button still looks pretty terrible. Now, the reason behind this is that when we compiled our CSS using the just-in-time compiler, it purged all Tailwind classes from the final CSS that weren't used in our HTML file at that time that we compiled it and it's not been rebuilt since then, so the CSS file ain't going to include the new classes we just added, but there is a way around this. So, back in VS Code, I'm going to come to the terminal and run the Tailwind CLI again, using the same command as before. So, we have our just-in-time flag and also our purge option as well, but this time around, I'm going to add on the watch flag as well, which is double dash watch. And what this flag does is tell Tailwind to watch our HTML file for changes, so that when we add extra classes to our HTML file, Tailwind is going to be watching that, and it's going to rebuild our CSS file to include those new classes. So let's hit enter now to run this. 
So since we just ran this again, it's rebuilt our CSS file to include those new classes that we already added to our button in the HTML file. Remember, they were the text blue 600, the text white, the P2, and the rounded classes. And if we open up the final CSS file, we can see those new styles if we scroll right down at the bottom of the file. So they're there now. All right, so let's try previewing this in the browser again. And we can see now that those new classes and styles have taken effect. So the good thing now is that since we're using the watch flag, we can just leave the just-in-time compiler running in the background. And whenever we add new classes to our templates, it's going to rebuild our CSS automatically with those new classes included inside it. So let's try adding some classes to the next button down here. So first of all, I'm going to add the class bg-green-500. And also I want to add the other classes from the first button as well. So let me copy those and I'm just going to paste them in the second one. All right, cool. So when I save this file now, Tailwind is going to rebuild our output CSS to include this extra color class that we've just used, the green one. And you'll see that rebuild message down in the terminal. So now if we open up our output CSS, then scroll right down to the bottom, we're going to see that new class. And in the browser now, we can see that change as well. So now at this point, we don't have to do anything more other than to continue adding Tailwind classes to our HTML files. And the just-in-time compiler is going to rebuild our CSS on the fly as we do that. So the second thing I wanted to show you is how to use the just-in-time compiler with your own Tailwind config file. So the Tailwind config file is used if you want to customize how Tailwind works, right? If you want to extend utility classes or colors, etc., and you might want to use that for your project. Well, the first thing we need to do is to generate that file. So let's cancel out of the current process, and then let's run npx Tailwind CSS init, and then press enter to generate that config file. And now we can see this new Tailwind config file. So it's inside here that we'd extend or customize Tailwind classes, right? I'm not going to go into detail about how to do that here. If you want to learn more about that, check out my Tailwind beginners course. The link is going to be down below the video. So what we can do now is just add in a mode property to this object. And then we set that to be JIT just in time, right? And this tells Tailwind that when it's building to use the just-in-time compiler. All right, so next we can add our template files to the purge array. So much like we did in the CLI, when we use that to purge our template files, we're going to do the same thing, but this time in the config file. So same as before, I'm going to say dot forward slash asterisk, meaning any file name dot HTML. And now we can just use the Tailwind CLI to build and watch. So I'm going to run pretty much the same command as before, but this time I'm going to remove out the purge flag because now that's in the Tailwind config and also the just in time flag as well, because both of these are in the config file right instead. And when we run this command, Tailwind is going to look for that config file automatically and it's going to enable the just in time mode as well as use this purge property. Now I am still going to add on the watch flag so that it rebuilds the CSS whenever we add new classes to our HTML pages. It's going to watch those. And now everything's going to run the same as before, only this time we have our config file to customize how Tailwind works. Cool. So next up, we're going to look at some of the extra features that the just-in-time compiler brings to the Tailwind table. 